Welcome, welcome to Chess with TV, episode 382. I'm your host, The Wiz. Today, we're going to play a very specific variant line in Atomic Chess. I don't mean variant. We're playing Atomic Chess, which is a chess variant where we can capture things, things blow up. However, there's an opening that's like eight or nine moves long that a lot of people play, and that opening is better for white. So much better that white almost has a forced win. But does he really have a forced win? Recently, I played against Stockfish, this opening, and you can find it a few episodes back on the YouTube channel, and I beat Stockfish level 8 with the white pieces. That's how good it is for white. But we're not 100% sure it's good for white. Stockfish is not really perfect at this opening. So we're going to play this opening against the viewership and see if black can draw the opening. Let's get into the details, and I'll show you what I mean. Here we are on a really weird-looking screen. Here we are on the chess.org, and here we are... At a chessboard. Does that look good? What are the opening moves? Um, e, F6, E6, then let's see if Eric is here. Then E6, then C6, then take me. Here we go. This is a, this is a very specific opening that's very common. Now, I hope he can figure out G6 here. I'm not going to tell him. Like, hmm, what do I do? Is, is it King E7? Hmm. I bet, I bet you can figure this one out. And then um, knight c6 is forced Whoops, to stop the explosion. So in atomic chess, when you capture a piece, everything around it blows up, except pawns. Pawns around it don't blow up, including the capturing piece and the captured piece. So if I play this move, then his king will blow up. That's kind of serious. So that's why knight c6 is forced. So now the move is axb6. Um, although I, I don't mind if you play a different move because queen v6 is the point there. And at this point, he has to run away because otherwise I'll blow up his king right here. So let's just say king f7. I'll tell him that much. And then I'm probably going to win this because he doesn't know the opening. So rook takes a2 is really important here because black is, a hit, is behind by tons of stuff. And by capturing this, it blows these up. Um, so I'll actually give him a take back because I'm totally going to own him if he doesn't play rook takes a2, because I will be ahead by like four things instead of one. Now, it's really interesting in atomic chess. You can actually measure aheadness. He, he declines. Okay, okay, then I'll just play atomic. Then you can count, measure who is ahead in terms of things as opposed to points. Because the fact is, let's get into this here. In Atomic Chess, whenever you capture something, you explode. Now he's proposing a take back because he probably heard me talking. He's watching the stream at the same time. So Rook takes a2. Oh, he can't propose take back. Now we're in the opening. So here's the, the score right now. I have seven pawns to his five. So I'm ahead by two pawns. However, he has three pieces to my two. So it's actually two pawns against a knight. Now the question of who's winning two pawns against a knight is is not entirely clear. A knight seems like it would be better than two pawns, but no, it's often not. And the reason is, it's two things. So if his knight takes my pawn, it blows up, and then I'm actually ahead by a pawn. So I have two things against one thing. That's why white is doing better here. All I have to do is get some trades, and I can win. Now, it's not always that simple, but in this case, I'm going to try to make it that simple. In this position, he got to make this capture because I would capture back here blowing up his king. And so that would be a win for me. Because of that, I'm going to try to keep these lines closed. I can actually push back past here and keep everything closed up. The reason I want it closed is if his rook can get in somehow, or like, you know, through this open file if it's open, and get close to my king, I can't take it because that would blow up my king because it's next to my king. So that means he can easily get a perpetual check where he's just check, 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 check in my face. And I cannot avoid being checked forever by the enemy rook. So part of what black tries to do in this opening and is get the rook over here in his face, anywhere on the other side of the board, because that would get a draw. And actually a black is a great result. Uh, I mean, a draw is a great result for black because black is way behind an atomic chest. So you can see now I've gotten my rook down here and I can blow it up on this pawn, which blows up his rook and, and bishop. So that would be and now, so far ahead, I can't lose. Now, the other thing I have to do is get these pawns away from my king, because if his knight were to take them, then I would lose. So as long as I get them away, I can't lose. I have to win this game. It's impossible not to win as soon as I move these pawns off. So I'll just do that now. It's like a little safety, a little bit of insurance. Because if he ever checks my king, I can just walk back and forth along here till he can't check me anymore. He has zero. Is that a zero? He has zero chances to win right now. I'll blow up his king, I guess. 
Now he really has zero. Good game, Eric002. So let's try the rematch and give you the big advantage here instead of me, uh, because it's a lot harder as black. And actually, in this opening, he's declining the rematch. Come on, Eric, let's do this. You're going to give me the white pieces, let me win, and then, like, I'm done? Come on. You got you to gotta take the cool, cool half of the board here. Okay, here we go. So let's tell him how to play. It's a knight of three. And then, does, is he going to remember this? E3. This is actually a very relatively forcing line, which is why it turns up a lot. Black doesn't have great options to avoid this. He has some okay options, knight d4, but not great, which is why black ends up just trying to draw. Atomic chess, so unfair. You basically try to draw in atomic chess if you're black. It's, it's sad, but the goal is to be white next game. So knight b5 here. He doesn't play atomic. Yeah, so that we're going to see. Now I take that. Queen h5, check, and that's not a check, but whatever. And then queen b5, and then queen b6. So one of the other things that that black can do here, instead of capturing this way, is capturing... Uh, I don't remember. I'm not going to make myself an idiot here. Bishop b5. There is one other line that's kind of comparably bad. So I think this is losing for black. My gut instinct is with perfect play, white can win. He can simply keep black from getting his rook down here and doing things. But watch what happens. Watch what happens. Just watch what happens. Okay. So what I'm going to try to do is open up the board so that I can get my rook in there. And I will play. Oh, should I take that bishop? Trading bishops like that? Hmm. If I take, he castles, I move my knight out, he brings his rook over here, I bring my rook over here, he plays his rook to the 7th rank, which is a pretty cool trick, and I take it. Then he's winning, so let's not do that. Because then I'll have two pawns for my knight. I don't want to trade rooks. If I trade rooks, my chances of go down a lot, and then his two pawns can promote. So I don't want to trade rooks. So he's hurrying to get his rook into the game here. The, when, when we have two rooks facing here, this is really interesting. If he just takes me, then it's my turn. We took the rooks off the board, but it's my turn. But instead, imagine the rooks here. He plays here. He plays almost to my face. This is a really common technique that you should learn if you love atomic. You got two pieces attacking each other. Put yours right next to his, like in his face, man. Because the, your opponent is then like, ah, ah. And so he takes you. And then it's your turn. So you actually gain a move that way. And I would be saying exactly that, because his next move would be threatening this pawn, blowing up my rook, if you can imagine that position. So since I don't want him to do that, I have to take him, and then he gained a move because it's his turn next. The rooks disappear. Now, right now, I can just win by moving my knight here, and I'm attacking two things, both of which blow up his king. So I've kind of forked two checkmates. Which is pretty nice, so I'll, I'll accept that take back. One more take back there. Oh, why am I so short? I hate being short. Do you know my whole life I thought I was short? It turns out I was just short-tempered. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Um, my whole life I thought I was short. And it turns out I'm exactly, exactly the average height. Uh, I'm a male, perhaps you can tell. And the average height for an American male, I'm also American, is a certain height. And I looked it up after I was a full-grown adult and learned that my entire life I was a normal height. Very, very major revelation for me because I had ingrained in my brain that I was short. What do I do now? So if I take, he plays his rook here, and then the rooks will come off, which is bad. So let's see if we can open up a, f a file here for myself. Should I lose my knight? Maybe I should let him take my knight. Hmm. I'm going to let him take my knight. Okay, something's opening up. Now maybe I won't let him take my knight. Now I'll put my knight in his face. Okay, interesting idea. He proposes a take back. Man, Eric, you got a lot of take backs up your sleeve. Okay, here's another one. I definitely want to learn. Okay, he's taking my knight. I want to learn the best play in this opening, so I don't mind the take back. Perhaps we can learn some technique here. Interesting technique for him is to put his bishop right here. That blocks my rook, if I ever want to use this file, from using the file. So that's an interesting strategy. Now, I could rook lift over this way. So there is that. Now, my pawns are going for it, man. Let's go. Come on, come on. He's rushing down here with these two pass pawns. But I've got... My pawns are a little further advanced. They're on my fifth rank versus his fourth. So I've got some chances here. LOL colon forward slash. This is the trendy. Hmm? If you put a nose in it, you're just 
you're putting too much effort in. Let's keep pushing this. See, this will be check. And then this, if, if he plays his king up, then he's kind of in the danger zone. And then I can play pawn here, threatening to blow him up. And that'll kind of give him some concern, I think. Let's see what happens. Oh, maybe I should have played my bishop back earlier. Because if he pushes, I could I could take blowing up his bishop. Gain, gain one thing. It's good to gain things in this game. Okay, so this is all pretty frozen up at this point. How do I get in? I know. I've got just the ticket. Move here. Here's the idea. If he pushes here, I'll take it with my bishop. That's a no-brainer. But I'm going to maneuver my rook to trade on his rook. Now, he won't want me to take him, since it'll blow up his king. It's a good reason not to want that. So he will do something else, like move his rook out, then I can promote. So that's the plan. Um cause consternation is my plan i think it's working let's hide myself here i'm invisible bam that's so effective you just have to go invisible and the opponent's like whoa whoa whoa, whoa, whoa and they resign that was perfect i win good game actually i do think i win this game if he takes my rook i promote with check wow so I won that game by having two advanced pawns coming at his king. So there was that. Let's play against Quickburger here. See if he's quick. I'm going to take the black pieces, actually, because I'm the higher rated opponent. I'm 2,000. He's 1,800. So I'm going to take black and play that opening and see what I can do to draw or win this specific opening. Knight f3. Um, Quickburger doesn't realize what we're doing here. There wasn't a take back button. There was... Okay, we're not going to play with him right now. You forfeit by not paying any attention. So you just he just didn't join early enough. So now I don't know if Luki Kam is going to play the opening either. So we're, we've got our fingers crossed. I'm taking white here, though. Got some interesting comments in the chat. Let's take a look here. What kind of a move was Rook A1? Ruffle. Different kind of chess, maybe. <laughs> That's correct. Different kind of chess, man. We're playing a different kind of chess here. He was He was thinking it was regular chess, and he's like, then this it doesn't make no sense. It does make no sense, and he was correct. Okay, yes, this is called atomic chess. If you capture a piece, it blows up. Watch what happens. See, this is actually a great opening. Not really in chess, but in this game, it's, it's really, really strong. We also have a comment from Cormac O'Bear, who says he'd be embarrassed to ask for that many takebacks. Very profound statement. More profound than you're realizing right now. What's this? Oh, I played it wrong. This happens to me constantly. I constantly make errors in my own move order. But I have a plan anyway. So I was supposed to play queen h5 check, forcing g6, then queen b5, forcing knight c6, and then queen b6. Seven or eight, whatever it is, dot queen b6. That was the idea, and I played it wrong. But I'm just going to go with the flow here. I'm going to play knight here and scare him because if he takes me it blows up his own knight and then i can take this pawn blowing up his own king Do you like those colors that would be bad for him so he's got a little bit of a problem here that i've created and boom there you go okay i think we got a challenge from young yi ten thank you luki Kam. that was fun probably lucky but i'll just make it up so are you ready specific opening this guy's never played atomic before so <laughs> this might go well and it might not if you are watching right now, knight f3, and you want to try this opening, throw me a challenge. I'd be happy to take it. It probably won't go worse than this, where I'm telling my opponent what to do. There is a rule of thumb in chess, which says, do not take the advice of your opponent. I play a lot of board games with more than two people, like three or four players, and sometimes you could take the advice of one of your opponents because he's advising you, knight d4, how to beat a different one of your opponents, and you can actually learn from that. But what happens is after you're a competent player, they start giving you bad advice. So a great rule of thumb is do not take the advice of your opponent, and queen h5, this is the move I missed. Here, queen h5, let's do it. And then queen b5. And then the brilliant queen b6, which I would not have found on my own, but somebody did it to me, and I'm like, wow, I should do that to other people. Just like a bad joke. It's like the joke about, about uh, the man who walked into the bar and said, 
Ouch. See, that joke is so bad, but people love it because they can use it on other people and ruin their lives. So now you should kill my queen? That's... No, 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 you have to take care of my queen. You did it wrong. Seven. Ah, whoops, it's not a knight. Never mind. Okay, never mind. That's how you spell never mind because we're in a new area of the universe where that's correct spelling. How do I save my queen? I want to save my queen. I'll play here. Maybe he's coming up with some new technique to destroy me. Hey, nice e3. He did play seven queen b6, so I think we're good. So let's throw away my queen like this. And I think I am ahead in things. Let's see. I've got two extra pieces. In terms of pawns, it is six against seven. So I'm down by one pawn, but I have an extra knight and an extra bishop. Pretty good. Pretty good. Let's, um, let's bring all these things out. It's really, really important to develop quickly once the board opens up. So I want to get my rooks in the game here as quickly as I can. This move's really good right now. So I'll play it. Because he can't block without me blowing up two things at once. I'll blow up the bishop when I capture. Oh, he blocks that one. Oh, that's kind of cool. I don't mind the trade. I don't mind the trade. In fact, I don't even lo mind losing my knight to this pawn. It's a very strange thing in Atomic, but everything's worth about the same in Atomic chess, so really... It doesn't matter if he takes your piece with a pawn. It just doesn't matter. Hmm. Got a comment in the chat from my friend, Jay Chosen. I should probably read it before I read it to you. Uh, it's just some words. Pretty safe. Oh, I'm down a pawn. It exchanged for two pieces. Okay, so I should be winning. What should I play here? That move. I think this might be interesting. I think this all might be interesting. If I take the rooks off the board, I will just win because I'm ahead things. I just don't want his enemy rook to get, like, there. That'd be really bad, so I need to make sure that doesn't happen. And I think I'm okay. Okay, so let's... Trade the bishop for a pawn, allowing me to do threatening things. Maybe this wasn't smart. There. I was worried that if the pawn gets here, it's worth a lot more. A lot more. So we don't want that to allow that. There is some risk that he could find a way to do like a repeated position thing. But if he plays over here, I'll blow up both rooks at the same time. So I think I'm okay. And here I can pin his rook. So if he takes a file I and I challenge it, then he switches files and I have to challenge it, that could be a problem where we repeat the moves. But this will work. It's a nice pin. And in the end, I'm ahead by some things. So I think I can win this now. Excellent. So let's take a look at that message from Jay Chosen. See what he has to say. Generally speaking, I want to close this up. Make sure there's some pawns left on the board so I can win. He says, I know this is atomic chess, but the other day I lost a game because my king was not protected. Cool story, bro. Then what happens? Then he says, oh, 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 oh. Don't want to let that ruck out. <laughs> oh, almost blundered there. He says, even though I felt like it was protected. Wow, thanks for telling me. Then what? The reason I pushed my rook to prevent a pawn push. I don't think you can push rooks. I think pawns are the only kind of thing you can push. Five to five, I'm ahead by a knight. Should I just take that? I think I can just take that. I think this is going to work. I'm going to create a pass pawn by pushing my rook. Okay, let's see. I push my rook to prevent a pawn push. Do you think using a rook to stop a pawn push is bad compared to just defending a king in a game where the pieces are even? Like, was there a lot on the board, Jay Chosen? Or was this an endgame? Because it sounds kind of like an endgame when you say my rook was stopping his pawn. But then you're saying you got checkmated? <laughs> you're not supposed to get checkmated in an endgame. So let's ask that. Jay Chosen, I'm not going to type. Jay Chosen, was this an endgame with like two rooks and just pawns on the board, that's all? Or were you in danger of being checkmated? So the big question is, were you keeping your king in the corner to be safe? Or were you moving your king out because it was near the end of the game? Because you should, by the way, move your king out near the end of the game. Let's promote here. It's very important, by the way, to leave some pawns on the board, at least one pair of pawns on the board. And this is a weird thing about atomic chess. Once the enemy king comes close, he can come up and to your king. And how do you beat him then? You actually can't if there's nothing on the board but your queen. But as long as there's this other stuff on here, then you can. Watch this. First, 
after threatening his pawn. I'm going to kill you, pawn. If you don't get out of here, your whole family's dead. Okay, I think I threatened his pawn. Now I have to go get close to it. So you see, I'm not allowed to take his king because that would blow up my king. Weird rules. So let's wander over here near his pawn. And then I wander away. So what happens is he has to chase me. Otherwise, we separate. But when he's chasing me from behind, he gets near his own pawn and I blow him up. So this is the technique, by the way, if you're head by queen. He has to follow me and then I capture here, which blows up his king, doesn't blow up my king. That's a win. If he doesn't follow me, like let's say he could fly over here, well, then the kings are separated and I can just checkmate him in the normal fashion. So that's how you win queen against king is threaten the pawn, make sure it's a good threat, and then just like wander past it and it, it works. Okay, let's play a game against Quickburger. Maybe he's got the opening sorted out. Let's see, knight f3. That's an f, f3. Knight e3. I think he knows the opening now. E3, man. Now knight e4. Oh, he's, he's doing great. Knight b 5 Knight b 5 Now queen h5. You guys should try this opening against your friends if you have any. It's a pretty cool opening. Now queen b5. Queen b6. And this is the opening we are all waiting for. In this opening, I think black loses with perfect play, which is kind of depressing since I'm black right now, but whatever. Let's see what happens. So I would like to hear your thoughts. You can post in the comments below the video if you're watching on YouTube. If you're in Twitch, you can just type right now and I'll see that. I want to know what you think if this is a forced win for white or if black can draw this game. Because the, the material is very interesting. It ends up as two pawns for a piece, which in chess terms, you're ahead with the piece. But in atomic terms, you're behind because it's two things against one. He needs to blow up my queen. Don't do that, man. <laughs> my queen got away again. This is perfect. Okay, I think I'm going to just win again. I don't mind winning, so that's okay. So Jay Chosen's answer to was that an endgame? He says, yeah, it was more of a middle game. He could have pushed one pawn, causing a bad position, but basically everything was on the board. Man, everything was on the board, and he was promoting his pawn. That's amazing. Okay, what's happening next here? Bring out the knight. Atomic knights love to be on the side of the board. The reason is, if things are close together, they all explode together. So you move the knights far away so everything's spread out, then hopefully you don't die. Mm. Mm. Am I missing something here? Like victory. Hmm. Yes, I think my feet are being removed right now. I'm being defeated. It's too bad he wins. Let's see if he gives me a take back. Come on, Quick Burger. I know you're friendly. I know you want to do it. You really want to show off how you can beat Chess Wiz even after you give him a take back. So try it and show me what you got. Come on. Come on, man. Click that button. You know you want to click it. Is he going to make us all wait 20 seconds? By the way, if you're watching on YouTube, there's a little gear in the corner. Click that gear, and then you can click speed. And then you can click, um, I recommend 1.25, because I am a pretty quick guy. And then you can watch the video slightly quicker. It's pretty nice. Um, he's going to make me run out of time. So he can either blow up my king here, blow up my king here, or blow up my king here. Maybe not quite like that. And he will win. So he just took that win. The reason I wanted to take back was because I wanted to try this move in this position. He plays here, threatening the checkmate here. I take him blowing up my knight. So I lose two things for one, but I do survive. That was my goal there. So we have another challenge. Victress is challenging me to a 30-minute per side game, so I'll decline that. We've got a very strong player, Mui. So let's take this game. I love strong players. And I got the white pieces, which is perfect. So the funny thing about this opening is that black's pretty much almost forced into this into this line. Not not forced, but the other options are also difficult. Music Dan says he watches the videos in 2x mode. That's crazy. The way I talk, most videos you can't do that with. Hmm. I misspoke. Most videos you can do that with. You should watch most of YouTube in 2x mode. But I don't know about Chess with TV. That's that's kind of extreme. Extreme. It's kind of extreme. B. Uh, C6 here. I think he should play. Take me. And then G6 is obvious. And now anything. Anything. 
let's see how it goes. So I think I can win this. But let's see if a 2180 can find a way to survive. I am only 2060 and I'm playing 2180. So from a rating perspective, I should lose this game. But look at the chessboard. I'm not going to lose this game. There's no way I'm going to lose this game. In the worst case, it'll be a draw. Ladies and gentlemen. I should just say gentlemen, probably. Bishop here, threatening this. I like this because if his knight comes to here or here, I can take this blowing it up on either square. So let's play here. Let's castle. I like castling because I can get my rook quickly out there. Let's do this. Oh, yeah, good move. Let's go rook. This could be of some some concern for him. I wonder if he'll actually play knight c8. This is getting interesting, right? Right? We're finally have a close match here. And then he blocks me on that side and he attacks me over here. Could work maybe. Hmm. What about d4 and take this pawn? Because then my bishop can come in here and mess him up. If my bishop could, like, fly over to this square, that would help, I think. If I can stop the attack, I'm still winning, so I just have to survive. The pawn storm does have me a bit concerned. I don't want these two pawns and these two pawns to disappear from the board. That'd be bad. So, uh, I want to close it up somehow. If he plays here and I play here and the pawns are like that, hmm, then he pushes. I get, I, 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 so, yeah, I think I'm okay. Hmm. What about rook a8 now? Is that going to pull the knight back? Let's find out what it does. Let's find out. Knight b8 would be kind of funny to me. Kind of tie him up there a bit. Then I could take this. He'd probably want to push. But he might play his king. Ha, ha, ha. Because he doesn't want my bishop to come in here. That'd be pretty annoying for him. Or maybe just take his rook. He probably doesn't... Oh, no, he's disconnected. That's bad. There he is back. So take is the move. He plays bishop attacking my pawn and king. Um, <clears throat> interesting. And I push... Then he moves his bishop here. This is a very good play by my opponent. I don't think I need to open it up just yet. I think that could be a problem. Let's get the pawn to c5 and use it. So what would happen is his bishop would trade with my bishop, potentially, if he was able to do this. And at that point, he's got a rook that can do things, and my rook is out of play with the knight. That's serious, serious problem. I need my rook to be challenging his rook. So he's using his extra piece to get my rook out of the game. And the net effect of that is bad for me. So let's make sure that doesn't happen. Okay, so it's four pawns to four here. I'm okay in that area. Here I've got three pawns to two. Let's bring this rook back around. I need to make sure I can challenge him on this file. Yeah, I think I like this. I've got two pawns against the knight. We're still looking at this here. All the other pieces are, are perfectly balanced in terms of power. Let's give him some more time. Maybe he'll give me time. Take the knight now. The rooks face each other. I'm ahead by a pawn and there's only bishops on the board. This is very good for me. Oh. Oh, <laughs> do you see what I see? If you're an advanced atomic player, you may know that he's, he can draw this. Maybe. So the problem is, my bishop can't do anything. I think I can get the most interesting this by playing here. In fact, maybe I can start by win that way. If I could trade my bishop for one of his pawns, 
that would win because I would be ahead by a pawn. However, it may be that my bishop cannot do anything ever. That would be bad. So one of my plans in the last five moves has been to get my pawns on white. Uh, I'll just circle this one. It's the only one on white. And so that he can't take it. So I had two pawns like this. I didn't want him to trade his bishop for my pawn. I did not want him to blow this up here and then leave me with a bishop that could do nothing. So I have... I have... Uh, okay, that's all. Mm -hmm. I'll push, and then my pawn is that much closer. Okay. King f1 is going to be my safety. I think I can win this. 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 I think I can win. Oh, it's difficult to win, but I think I can. Did you? Did I mention that I, I think I can win? Because hmm. now I can trade my bishop for a pawn. I did it. I traded my bishop for a pawn. Yes, I win against Moy. This guy's a good player, and he does resign. That is a difficult, difficult ending to win. I actually want to rewind here back to this position, and I would get CPU analysis on this, but when my CPU analyzes the position, it goes... Except it's silent. And then the stream gets really choppy, so I don't want the stream to get choppy, so we're not going to ask for computer analysis here. But in this position, actually... Right here, he's just pushed his pawn. This is a very, very good move because now my bishop can't trade for this pawn. If I could just take this, I win. But after this move, my bishop cannot take that. It cannot take that. It cannot take that. It cannot take that. And it will only be able to take this if I can freeze it on that square. So that's actually why I play g4 is because maybe... But I'm just playing unicorn chess here at this point, which is like imaginary because I can't force it to stay there. In no time at all, it advances. And now all of the pawns are on white. So I can't capture one. So I really think I can't win this. Oh, I really want to go to analysis board, but then it's going to go choppy. I think this might be a draw. I don't even know. Really interesting. You can go to my profile on leechess.org slash at slash chesswiz and find this game, and you can run your own analysis and see if white can win this. Very, very close. I had had positions where the bishop can't take anything, and so even though you're ahead of bishop, you don't win because the bishop can't take anything. So that's really, really interesting there. But in the end, I did win. That was great. So that's Atomic Chess Queen B6. Unfortunately, that's all the games we have right now because we're out of time. Very, very interesting. Keep an eye on the website, chesswiz.tv. That's spelled with an H and then an H because I'm not cheese whiz. And I'll be putting the next episode on there shortly. So you can actually look into the future and see what's coming up. Where We have live broadcast Sunday at 3 p.m. GMT on twitch.tv slash chesswiz. Or you can find us on YouTube. Lots and lots and lots of episodes there. This has been Chesswiz TV. Thanks for watching.